All right, everybody. Um, please go to your digital notebook to slide 28, 20, and then you'll fill in slide 28, and then um, you'll move on to 29 and 30. Okay, we're kind of skipping some slides, but we will go back to them. It's just um, a lot of this unit is kind of, it kind of overlaps, if you will, a little bit. So you'll hear some of this stuff over and over again. But um, it's all really good info. So we're in unit nine. Um, currently, we're talking about cells. And then we'll move into our part of the unit where we talk about how the organisms are classified and all that good stuff. All right. So. This is the slide joining. Okay, so I'm going to kind of tell you about this guy, but Robert Hoke, or Hook. I think it's Hook, to be honest. But in, nine, in 1665, he observed bark of cork trees under a microscope. And he thought um, these looked like individual rooms and, and developed cells. He he discovered cells pretty much. Um, but he did not really know like what they were or like their function. He just discovered them. So this other gentleman, Anton Van Leeuwenhoek, he developed the microscope lens to see things in a bigger scope, in a greater magnification. Um, he was the first person to see bacteria, uh, like single-celled organisms. And he did see red blood cells as well. Um, feel free again at any point in the video if you pause and fill in your notes. Don't forget about your good little notes over here, okay? So you might want to pause and fill in stuff about uh, Lewin Hook um, and all that good stuff, all right? Um, these are really weird names of these guys. So do, again, pause and fill it in. Like who I'm talking about right now, you want to go and fill in right here um, in your notes. So make sure you do that. But Matthias Schleiden, um, he, and I'm kind of reading this off, so you can kind of write it in your own words. You don't have to write it word for word, but I mean, you can just pause and kind of do what you need to do. He did conclude that all plant tissues are composed of cells. He declared that cell, the cells is the basic building block of all plant matter. And I mean, he looked at the importance of the nucleus and the cell. And this was in 1838. So here's your plant cell. And, you know, um, Theodore Schwann. And, yes, they're great weird kind of names. But you have to remember, this was back in the 1800s, the early 1800s. He concluded that all animal tissues are composed of cells, too. Um, and this was really a new theory in biology, which is the study of life. Um, so this is very important, cell theory. So on your notes... You will be tested on this especially. So cell theory. Um, these two guys, the two guys on the prior slides, um, these ideas became known as cell theory. So here's the main parts of cell theory. Um, you might want to write this down in the bold, okay? Uh, all organisms are composed of cells, which is very true, and cells are the basic unit of life, okay? This theory was an important was important to biology, Um yeah. Uh, so if we move on to Rudolf Virchow, and you can uh, fill that in here. If you need more room, just go ahead and like add a text box, and you can kind of type in here. Okay. But oops, sorry. But he proposed that all cells result from the division of previously existing cells, and this idea became a key part of cell theory. So in your notes under cell theory here. You have two parts. You wrote the stuff in the bold. But there's a third part. So you need to write number three and then um, write down pretty much. Okay, it's going to let me click. There we go. Write down that all cells come from other cells. Write down all cells come from other cells. Okay. Um, so that was in 1855. So that's all very, very important. So here's modern cell theory. So you should have these two down. Okay, that was in the bold print, and then I did tell you just now under cell theory for it to have a third part here, so write that there, that all cells come from the division of previous existing cells, or all cells come from other cells, okay? Um, so if you need this, um, you could even, if you're like confused, you could write down all this, 
and put it in this section and this section to help you remember what these gentlemen do, okay? Or did. Um, so we're going to move into the function of cells, all right, and talk about that stuff. We don't need to know all these things, to be honest, but we're going to kind of just talk about it. So this was this page. If you kind of notice, make sure you fill this stuff in to pause, go back, and make sure this whole slide is filled in. I'm going to move on to this slide, okay? Um, and you should get this filled in from that modern cell theory page, all right? So what I'm moving into now is basically going to be this stuff on here and on here, okay? So make sure that you use... Uh, your notes to correctly fill this in. It's very important. So, metabolism of cells. Um, well, there's going to be chemical reactions happening inside the cell. Um, cells have a certain response to, example, certain stimuli like light, like a plant bends towards the light. Um, and then homeostasis. Well, it helps keep our insides tolerable and balanced. Okay, so. Cells do a lot of different things for us. Um, growth, they help us grow, okay? Cells help us grow like plants, and as you can see, what how you grew from being a baby to in sixth grade. Um, nutrition, if you look here, um, an unhealthy cell looks very different from a healthy cell, so um, they, they're able to help us take in food and take and take it in and our insides do what it needs to do to help us stay healthy. Okay. And then defensive, um, it helps protect us from outside uh, diseases and stuff. So our bodies do a lot of cool things, but the thing is, is our bodies do this stuff because we're made of cells and cells are very important. Okay. Um, Moving down, my, my cursor is just being slow, so you guys got to be patient with me in this video. I'm not doing this slide. Um, okay, here we go. Starting to move. All right, hold on. All right, so in this video, um, this is like part two of the video because I kind of had a pause there, and I'm moving into a different slideshow. Um, this one's more so on prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Like I said, these slideshows kind of overlap, but we'll go back to them and move on to like the new stuff when we get to that portion of the unit, okay? Um, if I find the slide that we're on, we're looking at prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So the slide that you need to be on for this video, and if you don't get everything, it's okay. We're just going to kind of do our best right now. But the slide we're on for this stuff, I um, believe you want to be on this one, slide 31. So I, I don't know all these in order per se, but um, you can kind of fill this in as we go along, okay? All right. Um, so yeah, we were going to be on slide 31 and kind of look at where you'd fill this stuff in. So again, um, I think it's actually, let me see. My cursor is being very, very slow. So yeah, it's going to be slide 30 and 31. I apologize. 30 and 31. Kind of look at what you can fill in here. So prokaryotic and eukaryotic, we did mention this part in class, but in, inside, inside every cell, most cells, I should say, um, in multicellular organisms. Remember, we did talk about this. Uh, organisms composed of many cells. Um, you're going to have a nucleus, okay? That's like the boss of the cell. Um, and these ones are known as eukaryotic cells. The cells in animals, the cells in plants, and the cells in humans like us. So we're going to have eukaryotic type cells because they have a nucleus. Okay. So true nucleus, that's kind of what it means. And we do have a nucleus. Cells like unicellular organisms, like a bacteria, they have prokaryotic cells, meaning no nucleus or before nucleus. So kind of scrolling through, let's get to the stuff that you kind of need to know right now. Um, so some similarities between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Um, remember, prokaryotic cells, this is going to be like more your bacteria-looking thing. And then eukaryotic cells 
kind of like us. We have a nucleus. They do not. And if they don't have a nucleus, that means they're not going to have all these other little organelles things inside. It kind of just looks like a big jelly bean with little things poking out of it in a way. Okay. Um, if you want to fill this stuff in, you can, but I'm just telling you, that's what you need to know right now. Okay. Um, the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic, like I said already, there's no nucleus in like the jelly bean looking one that's prokaryotic and eukaryotic. You do have a nucleus. Um, it's going to be bigger. It's going to have all the little organelles inside. Um, they can, uh, you, multicellular organisms, which have like these types of cells can reproduce sexually or asexually. Um, there's going to be DNA and you can see like if that one can do all this stuff, this one cannot really. Okay. So it doesn't have all those organelles. Um, just pointing out to you the nucleus in plant and animal cells, there is a nucleus and, and you remember we talked about how the plant cell is very structured because like think of a stem. It's very structured. In the animal cell, it's kind of like jelly-ish, kind of a blob. And if you kind of like just grab your arm and like pinch it a little bit, I mean, that's our skin. It has like that more moldy kind of feel to it. Um, prokaryotic cells, there's no nucleus. Um, yeah, okay. Um, these organelles, remember I did tell you that they, the prokaryotic ones, like the bacteria, do not have it. Our cells do have the organelles because it has that nucleus. Um, two big words we already talked about in class are unicellular and multicellular. Um, so unicellular organisms are basically going to be prokaryotic, meaning they're going to be made of one cell, and usually these cells do not consist of a nucleus. Okay. Eukaryotic cells are going to be multicellular, made of more than one cell. So like trillions, like us, animals, and plants. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's all I wanted to go over with you, to be honest. I don't think we need to fill all this stuff in. But just to kind of give you an idea, these last two slides here, organisms with prokaryotic cells, um, I mean, all these names are crazy, but you can see they're basically like bacteria and diseases type stuff. So like the E. coli uh, bacteria, I mean, ew. <laughs> and then if you look at uh, eukaryotic cells, the ones that have many, made of many cells and they have a nucleus, uh, things like yeast helps bread rise, paramecia, and there there are reasons that these are under here because you might think like this thing. Why is this thing in um, listed as eukaryotic? Well, they have nucleuses in their cells. That's why. Okay, maybe not multicellular, but they have nucleuses in their cells, so they're considered eukaryotes. Okay, um, mushrooms, grass, potatoes, trees, algae, frogs, humans. Um, we will talk about those reasons for those things, you know, but for now you just know animals, plants, us, okay? Um, and that's really it for now. I mean, you can pause the slideshow and go back and find anything in your notes. It's kind of confusing right now, but I mean, that's really all you need to know for now.